Hello, beautiful souls. My name is Ekaterina Popova. I am an artist, entrepreneur, founder of Create Magazine, and I'm so excited to be launching this channel. I thought I would just take a moment to introduce myself and share with you why I'm even creating this. I wanted to just go deep on this channel and offer free career advice, share my creative process, my painting process, as well as take you behind the scenes of my amazing studio here in Philadelphia and some exciting travel things that are going to be coming up. So. I wanna give you a little bit of my background because <laughs> I did not get here, you know, in a smooth way. I definitely fell and failed forward and I am an immigrant. So let's backtrack. I wanted to share that I grew up in Russia and I was always creative and I didn't really know that I was going to become an artist, but art is something that helped me transition from moving to another country as a preteen teenager. And it has been part of my mental health, my wellness, and just part, such an important part of my life ever since I was a little girl. So art is incredible and we don't need to make it our career to enjoy it but a lot of us have this passion and a dream to support ourselves through doing what we love. And that is what I figured out over the past decade. So as I mentioned, I am a painter. I exhibit my work all over the world now. And I also am the founder of Create Magazine, a publication for contemporary emerging artists. I also coach other creatives and artists on all things business and mindset, and I'm a certified coach through Yes Supply Method. And so the reason why I wanted to share this channel is because when I was starting out, I was painting on the floor of a studio apartment. I didn't have access to coaching. I didn't have, I didn't even know about the world of self-development until a few years later. So I pieced together the information to help me get here. And I really wish I had someone or multiple people to use as role models or as a resource for when I was getting started. So I hope to be that for someone. So if you're a new artist or someone who just recently decided to commit to their art as a path or maybe even a creative business, I'm your girl. Um, I have been through it all. <laughs> I have gotten to massive debt, I paid it off. Um, I've gone through making $2,000 a year to making multiple six figures. And let me tell you this, one thing I learned for sure is that we can create a new reality. So if we don't like what we currently see reflected in our world and in our daily life, the good news is, is that we can change it. And I'll be sharing some things soon on upcoming episodes, upcoming videos with you for how you can do that as well. And my biggest passion right now, I would say, is to create a beautiful life that we're proud of. So taking your whole life as a canvas, not just the artwork, though of course that's, for me, that's like my number one love, painting, but just making sure my whole life is beautiful and I feel inspired in every area from relationships to finances to health to spirituality. And of course, it's never gonna be perfect, but we can take steps and we can create a vision and get there. So I have gone from, like I mentioned, moving to a new country, moving to a rural small town where we knew nobody, we didn't have any money, connections, resources, anything like that. And after college, I ended up spending a few years couch surfing and living in basements until through the generosity of others and through my own resilience, I was able to you know, find a place to live and finish my degree. But even after college, I worked a ton of minimum wage jobs and struggled and struggled both with my mindset and also financially and career. Um, and the biggest shift, people always ask me, what changed things for you? What really changed your life? And I think it was the one day I remember coming home from a shift that I absolutely hated. And I was like, I cannot keep going like this. There has to be something better. And at that point, I've already tried a few jobs. They were all sort of minimum wage, uh, underpaid employment opportunities, which I'm still so grateful for because they did get me to where I am today. 
but they just weren't lighting me up. I was so drained, I was so uninspired, so bored, and also I wasn't getting paid a lot. <laughs> so imagine it was kind of a toxic combination. But I remember coming home and deciding that I'm going to commit to my success even if it takes me my whole life, even if it doesn't happen until I'm 90 years old. And ironically, that's when things started to change for me. One, I took the pressure off making things happen quickly. So I just started to show up consistently, applying to opportunities, doing my artwork. At the time I was painting on the floor. So I was painting between our TV and our kitchen table. And it was not ideal, but I showed up. I remember showing up, getting up at 5 a.m. before my shift at the bank at the time, making a few paintings, using my whole day off to either research opportunities, apply for other jobs or exhibitions, um, or participate in local shows and paint. And I was so committed. And later on, as I continued to work these jobs that I absolutely was not you know, in alignment with, but they were part of my journey on purpose, I know I was meant to experience them, I started to really dive into the world of self-development and meditation and a lot of mindset work. And I would spend my lunch breaks at Barnes & Noble. And one of the things that I've done at Barnes & Noble, which I believe led to starting my first business, was I would go look at art magazines every single day in art books. And I was obsessed because it felt like a window into the world that I wanted to be a part of. So that is how I started my first business. It was back in 2013. I had no graphic design experience. I just opened my Apple computer, thank God I had that. And I made something very scrappy in a document. So um, now Crate Magazine has almost 200,000 followers and readers all over the world. Um, we feature artists that are both mid-career established and emerging, and we work with incredible curators, art fairs, galleries, and it's just such a fulfilling journey that actually ended up lifting me as an artist and challenging me to step up as well. So I'm sure I'll be sharing a ton about that later on, but I wanted to give you a brief introduction as to why I am here and what I'm gonna be sharing with you, because it's gonna be, if you don't know the story, it's gonna feel random. You'll be like, what is this girl doing? She's painting, but then she runs a business, but then she's coaching, and now she's traveling the world, and how is she doing it? Well, don't worry, <laughs> I'm gonna explain all these things to you. Um, and I actually, I even wrote down notes because I have so much to share, and I wanna keep these videos digestible for you. Like I mentioned, through a trial and error, a really long, deep healing journey, healing my soul, healing some, releasing limiting beliefs, I started to slowly gain traction in my art career. I would have local exhibitions in Philly and Delaware. Um, and then I would slowly start getting accepted to juried shows and other opportunities. And little by little, baby step by baby step, I was able to start selling my work, um, sharing it online, growing my Instagram and all the good things. And of course it was not an overnight process. So if you're looking for a quick fix, this channel is not for you. This is a long game. This is the game where we commit to this journey until we're a hundred years old. But I will also say disclaimer, when we make that commitment and we set that intention in the universe, it moves really quickly and you'll see some amazing results in your life as well. I really believe now that we are the creators of our reality and I'm actually inspired because I'm creating a program for people who want to create a business and change their reality. But I'm in this mindset right now where I am the unlimited creator of my life, of my art, and if there's something that I'm missing, I can learn a new skill, I can ask for help. Um, but I truly believe from everything I've learned up to this point in my journey, that everything we need for our success, the vision that we have, not someone else's vision, but the dream that we truly have is already inside of us and we're all born, we're all born whole, worthy, and complete. So I stand by that truth and this truth has reflected in my life and I hope that you adopt it if you haven't already. So I wanted to share a timeline with you because I wrote it down this weekend in my coaching membership, The Art Queens, uh, one of our guest speakers Jess Hughes had us create a timeline and so I want to take you through it so you have a little bit of context as to what I'm talking about 
and what I'm doing with myself right now. <laughs> yeah, I was born in Russia in 1988 in a small town called Vladimir, and we were like lower middle class. You know, my family was in, like in poverty, but we certainly struggled a lot. I grew up with a single mom, um, and so we moved to the U.S. when I was 12 and a half, 13 in 2001, right before 9/11. So that was my welcome into this country. It was really wild. Um, I continued to draw and paint and enter art contests and eventually in 2007 I graduated from Kutztown Area High School with you know my obsession with art and despite what anyone said to me I decided to go for it and I went to school at Kutztown University for painting. And so what happened was during school, like I mentioned, I was couch surfing and living in people's basements in the beginning because I had trouble getting financial aid, I had trouble getting student loans, and I just wasn't even sure how this was going to work out for me, right? And so um, it, it was wild. I really had to lean on faith. Like I knew I had to, I prayed the whole summer before college, like, God, I need a breakthrough. I need a miracle. I need, I want to go to art school. I didn't want to just, there's nothing wrong with just working, but I knew in my heart I was meant to get an art degree. And so I prayed and prayed and finally, Something happened and I did end up getting some financial aid and eventually I was able to find a place to stay thanks to my amazing friends and family now. So <laughs> it all worked out, but and that, more about that later. But what there was a miracle that happened in college and this is really important and this literally changed the trajectory of my life. Aside from committing to my success, which was one of the things that changed my life, there was one singular event that happened in college that transformed me as a person. And so in 2009, I was going through a really hard time. I was really depressed, anxious. I was recovering from my couch surfing, basement surfing days and I was just really having a hard time. I was having some relationship problems with my boyfriend I'm still with, but it, it was just really stressful for me. I was adjusting and living in financial uncertainty can, can definitely add to stress. And so in the midst of this sort of internal hurricane, I was having some you know, challenges with my family as well. I got this proposition to become the director of a student run gallery. Mind you, I was what, like, 19, 20 years old, and I had never even like worked a proper job before. I had no management experience. I barely passed math in high school, and part of this job was to submit expense reports, manage exhibitions, and um, work with different artists from the region. And so something inside me just said, yes, go for it go for it, yes, you got this. And I said yes, and I was terrified. I was so deeply uncomfortable. I felt like such an imposter. And I knew like people, not that they didn't believe in me, no one really knew me, I was a brand new student, but I remember people like being like, really her? And yes, really her. It was, I was meant to experience that because that shifted my whole perception. Instead of waiting for a professor to approve me, um, or to you know get something from my class, I was out there creating opportunities. I was like working in the field during school, so I was upset. Like I love, it was challenging. We had a group of volunteers. We would hang the shows, repaint the walls, um, create. We had meetings in a coffee shop. It was amazing, and I'm sure I'll be talking about, about that later. But basically, saying yes to that scary opportunity changed my life because I did not see myself as a leader, and the fact that someone saw me as a leader and gave me this opportunity literally changed my life. So next time you, there's a scary opportunity that a part of you is like, yeah, I kind of want to give it a shot. Just listen to that voice. It won't ever lead you astray. So. I, even though I had this amazing experience, when I graduated in 2011, things did not look good. The economy was shot, there were no jobs, and I applied to like every single art job under the sun and I didn't get into any of them. And the ones that I did get into were like very little pay and I had to travel and the cost of travel would cost even more than I would get paid and I didn't have a car at the time. So it was really, it was tough. So my first job was serving pancakes at IHOP and I cried every single day of that job. <laughs> I don't even wanna talk about that yet. So fast forward to 2012, 2013, 14, I worked 
other minimum wage jobs. I worked at the bank as a teller. I worked in cosmetics at Macy's. And my last day job that I've had was I worked in Capital One at the call center, which actually surprisingly was my favorite one of all of them. <laughs> Maybe because I knew I was on my way out. And also the people I worked with were wonderful. And, you know, during this time, I was building a business. I mentioned that I spent all my free time at work at Barnes & Noble or looking things up on my phone or laptop, and I really maximized every free moment I had because I knew I was meant for something different. And I knew that I, this was part of my journey, but I was, like, either pinning, posting on Instagram, researching opportunities, or pinning something on Pinterest. So I didn't waste any time. And finally, in 2016, I was working with a business partner at the time, which unfortunately did not work out. Um, we just had two different of visions about the business, but I ended up partially thanks to her and her, you know, she was very bold and brave and a risk taker. I ended up leaving my day job and pursuing my business and my art full time, 2016. Three months after that, <laughs> I lost my first business. <laughs> and, you know, I wanted to tell you that everything was wonderful and um, it was rough. I drank a lot. I couldn't get out of bed. I was very disappointed and devastated. It felt like losing a, a child because I worked so hard all these years uh, working up to this moment only to lose it. So I had to live off credit card debt for a while. And you know what? At the time I was so ashamed, I thought like a failure, but I thank myself for being resourceful and for trusting myself to create a new business that was even better than the first one. And I have succeeded in that. It took a little bit of time to pay myself back and pay off those cards, but I knew what I, like I already had a tested business model. So it wasn't that I was taking an experiment and just using credit cards, you know, without any plan. Um, but it still was very scary and very uncomfortable. And but at the same time, this when I look back, those were some of the biggest growth spurts in my life. Okay, so um, in 2017, I was rebuilding my entire life. Not only did have I lost my business, but I felt like I lost myself. I had to learn to trust myself fully. And part of the reason why the business partnership didn't work out is because I didn't trust my vision. And I thought someone else was more talented, knew better than me. And I gave away my power. And it's not to say that the other person wasn't talented or didn't have amazing ideas. It's just the dynamic didn't work for me and I really had to learn that lesson firsthand. Like I mentioned, even though it was a really painful time, from 2016 to 2018, I found myself rebuilding the business, but at this time I had to really commit to it. It was all me. Um, I, <laughs> I was fully responsible for the success and failures of the business, but at this time my art career also really started to take off. I found a new sense of love for what I was creating and I found myself having exhibitions, Media started to feature me more and more, and I was just really falling in love with the process. I had a lot of local shows, I felt so good, and I even started to go to my first artist residencies. The first one I've ever went to was actually right around the time that I was rebuilding my business, and it was so special to me because it was in Greece on an island called Skopelos, Skopelos Art Foundation. And during this time, I just dove into healing and just connecting with myself, with nature, with God, in this beautiful landscape with the most amazing people and food, and I met some incredible new friends as well. As I started to get stronger, my business was growing, I was able to partner with different art fairs and grow my business by hiring writers and starting to work more and more with my friend and partner, Alicia. So things were really looking up around this time. Um, but unfortunately, <laughs> like I said, life is a roller coaster and things don't always move up gradually. I kind of had a nervous breakdown slash identity crisis in late 2017, 2018. And luckily, I actually had a residency scheduled in Iceland and I used this time to heal, to really decide what was important to me and recreate my identity. And through this moment of pain, through this moment of being completely broken, feeling like a failure, um, I really did find myself. I found my inner strength. And just like any other time where something seemingly horrible happened to me, I was able to create something beautiful out of that.
the, this year after the breakdown was the year that I got my driver's license, I got my first car. I ended up traveling to France and Amsterdam with Alicia. I ended up getting my first art studio. My work was exhibited at an art fair in New York and things were just starting to bloom but I didn't know it was gonna be the beginning <laughs> of another journey because Alicia and I started to write a book and we'll be talking more about this because we're working on another exciting Every perceived challenge or setback or failure usually ends up springing something, so you got it. <laughs> the next part is good. 2020, we all know what happened. We don't need to, <laughs> we don't need to relive that. I was healing from that trauma of having someone I trusted come after us with the legal stuff, but I was also beginning to coach. And this was a really beautiful time in my life where I was using these, these challenges, these lessons, these setbacks to share and empower others. So that is how my coaching was born. That's how my membership, The Art Queens was born. And I'll be sharing more about that very, very soon. So, <laughs> It's 2022 and I know I'm just getting started and I don't want to bore you with more details, but I'm going to be breaking down some of the ways that I've been able to recover from these failures, from these massive disappointments and rise up again like the lotus. And through this, I even have a, t a lotus tattoo on my finger because, and I even have a diamond because diamonds are made under pressure. The thing is, is what I learned is that it's all in our mind, it's all perception. So if we perceive something to be negative or, or harmful to us, usually that's how it ends up feeling. But if we look for the gift and opportunity in every challenge, even if it seems really dire, then usually we're able to rise up and use it as a stepping stone to new greatness and a new level. And I am so just thrilled to be here today with you and I am excited to share my journey because I know that someone like me, a regular immigrant girl who didn't have a background, no one in my family owned, owns a business, no one in my family went for art. They're all creative and talented, but I didn't have that kind of support. I didn't know what to do. And if I can figure it out, you can figure it out. And so going from living in basements, painting on studio apartment floors, working at IHOP, I rang in 2022 with an exhibition in Paris and I'm currently preparing work for other exciting exhibitions in Europe and the US and I can't wait to share the journey with you. It's gonna be epic. Um, and guess what? You're able to create epic opportunities in your life as well. So I encourage you to commit to your success no matter what. I know that we want it now and we want it yesterday, but the thing is, is that if once we give ourselves that space and time and freedom to figure things out, the pressure falls off and then we can show up with things with love and curiosity and play and life gets so much better. Thank you so much for being here. I am so thrilled because I'm going to be sharing some behind the scenes with you. I'm going to be showing you how I make my art, a typical day in the studio, how I unwind and stay grounded, and much more. I'll see you on the next episode. If you want to hang out with me and be part of this journey, go ahead and hit subscribe. This is how this thing works. <laughs> hit subscribe, turn on notifications, and I will be back with a new episode hopefully once a week. Week, but please don't be too hard on me because I do have other other stuff I'm working on but this is like my passion project that I'm just really excited to share my stuff and hopefully empower you in the process all right have a beautiful day all the blessings all the success and remember that you are an unlimited creator